On our journey through to Hungary, we stopped by a castle, Schloss Schellenberg, uh, which is buried deep in the countryside. It's quite a uh, magnificent building. And we're going to see now whether we can get in there and have a look. I'm quite pleased that we've had this opportunity to touch in with culture for once. 150 euros you get a room. That's a room. In the Berlin, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven thousand. Rather quite excited to go in there. I'll keep my ticket. Because obviously. Yeah. Okay. Enjoy. Go on, nice Thank you. See you shortly. We'll come back up and go. Uh, Hello. Hello there. Hello there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. After that, one is going to take Poppy for a walk because dogs aren't allowed in the castle, which it did say that in German, admittedly, or Austrian, but um, it was confirmed at the gate. I'm not sure of the history of this building, so you'll probably see subcaptions coming up here and there where necessary, but uh, I love the gatehouse. I love castles. Me too. That's the escape room. Wow. I love the arcade gallery. What a magnificent structure. And each one of the pillars is caryatid, those figures that you see in brick. And on the wall it's uh, showing the immortal bearings of whichever family were in occupancy of the castle. So it actually goes way back. The earliest state that I can read is 16... 1660 Let's have one, let's have a look at those yeah, staircases, it's magnificent, look at this And you can see all those those figurines, the caryatids, which are lining each pillar supporting the uh, columns and overhead obviously people famous from Austrian history which you probably can't see on this camera. Mm. 
Look at this in brick. Let's show one of the figurines. So beautiful. I mean, look at this view here. Wow. Actually, when I say brick, it's actually stone that's been painted. Painted the colour of brick. And the view into the courtyard. This is the ossuary we didn't see when we stayed overnight last night in Linz. What a lovely view and to actually be walking in history is uh, having travelled all this way from England is uh, quite spectacular. Well, it's, it is absolutely beautiful. What's in there? Ah. Is it in English? <laughs> yeah, otherwise it would be very difficult. Ah, oh, look at this. This is covering the various groups that have passed through here, the Magyars, the Hungarians, the Bulgarians, the Avars, I don't know that group, the Huns certainly. This is some of the uh, jewellery which represents each of those different groups. The, the Avars have uh, an unidentified origin. As much as I can say about that. group has swept all the way through Europe and got as far as France before their leader died and they just literally all returned back to to their place of origin. This is some of their craft work that's been left. It's interesting to think that there are still elements or traces of their uh, presence in Europe. It's um, absolutely amazing. And this is some of their jewellery and uh, other items, if you can see it.
I think it's amazing that after all these centuries, there are still relics of these people left in, in Europe. You can also were great horsemen and as you can see here all these shields and buckles and stirrups all appertain to that particular endeavour. This is fantastic. The amazing tribe of people. Wow, and these are the bows they would have used. Oh, look. And look at this broadsword, which is one of their swords. You step out of light, Harry, sorry. This is one of their swords. And here, wow. pieces of bone which are obviously being carved for use. I can't actually see what it's for. Yeah. An incredible exhibition. I've never seen anything from the, uh, the Mongolians. This beautiful sword. Unfortunately, you're not really getting an in depth look at what is actually here, but it gives you an idea. Now, of course, we're moving towards the German tribes that came after them. Yeah, this is incredible. as children, which has caused uh, an elongation. That's exceptionally long. Yeah, but look at these, uh, in these um, deformed skulls, because they, they've been, they've had their heads bound when they were small, which has forced their skull to grow further out, which gives a rather squat appearance when you look at them, as, as with the same with this one here. And again, very small people, these must be children. Can't see in this light, unfortunately. No. But the skulls are not in natural shape. Should we go further then, Gary?
They look like the Greek characters, what does it say here? Oh, the Bulgars, the Bulgarians. Some of their work stone. Well, this is rather strange, isn't it? I think this has been loaned by the uh, Bulgarian government. And again, much more indications of their fine skills with working gold and jewellery. And again, back to the... This is all about the Huns here. And going back, of course, to their horse stirrups. Their riding accessories. More swords. This is absolutely beautiful, this, this metal pot. It's used for mysterious rituals, i.e. rituals that they haven't actually established from uh, excavations. Some fine gold work here. Amazing, isn't it? Beautiful, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The fact that somebody's been chopped up would suggest it was a booty from somewhere, wouldn't it? This was sheathed in gold. I do hope we can see all of this. And then we're coming into yet another exhibition. Bells, very fine gold work. Beautiful. Oops, bashing that. And again, more bone work and saws. What is this? Armour, Shield, This is armour. This is actual armour. I don't even like the way it is, is it? Very badly corroded, of course, but it is armour which was worn. Basically, just little sheets of metal. Um, more syrups and buckles. Some of the gold work here is, I know you can't see it, but it is absolutely exquisite. Oh, and they've got torques here as well. Common theme through primitive Europe. You can see the torques here made out of shells, yeah. oh, Beautiful. stones. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, this, it looks the most Roman actually, some of this metal work, but it, of course it would come at a later date. Big rings, big fingers. And look at this. I haven't got a clue what it is, but it's beautiful. And look at this, I mean, just the building itself, look at this. It is incredible, isn't it? When you see the thickness of the walls, which have got to be what, around about one and a half meters in thick thickness, And of course you can step up and you can see outside. What a beautiful, what a beautiful building. 
I love these chambers. For those of you who speak uh, Austrian German. It's a mirror. <laughs> to be Haas, which was used in Never Work. Absolutely beautiful. And they appear to have a, a dragon motif. It's a very good exhibition, isn't it? Mm. Oh, yeah. It is beautiful. Absolutely exquisite work. These are absolutely exquisitely crafted. After the fall of Rome, the, the skills that the, the Romans acquired in gold work, metal work, were not wasted. But the, the dragon appears to be a very strong motif. As you can see here, this is a belt set. The Lord of the Lee Chris have got none of writing in any other language apart from theirs. And these are purse plates, so they would have, you would have carried a leather purse, and that would have been the, the protective flap over the top, I presume, to stop people putting their fingers in there. Uh, again, very intricately worked. It must have taken many, many hours' work to uh, to produce these. Really beautiful. Okay. Here you've got the, well it's not a double headed eagle, it's a single headed eagle. And more belt buckles there. Yes, it's uh, an amazing exhibition. I just hope, of course, that you can see it because, you know, walking around with the camera, I can see it's clear as day, but the, uh, the light and the magnification vary. Wander up here. Oh, we've done that, haven't we? That's <laughs> back the other way. No, we've got to go this way. I oh, know that. Yeah, I gold, looked for that earlier. Gold double sea monsters. Absolutely beautiful, aren't they? Wow.
I think the most important feature that's not being shown here is the actual castle itself and these cells that uh, lead off from each other. So really this exhibition is about the nomads, all the varying tribes that trundled across Europe and left something of their legacy behind. It's almost, well, if not better than some of the Roman craft work. That's more Egyptian, that is. Bubble. That is stunning. Stunning jewelry. Absolutely beautiful. So basically, we have a jug and bowl. Uh, exquisitely worked again to exceptionally high standard and in absolute perfect condition. And when you think these were primitives that I know this is this is mad. This is all this. Let's go over the top. I'm not sure you can see this, so I'm gonna hold the camera back. It says at the bottom, actually, it says uh, find from the princely burial at uh, Kunzbathi. I think that's in, in the Czech Republic. I mean, this is a shared exhibition of all the varying tribes that uh, settled in Europe through, through history. And of course, with them, they brought their own skills, that, which uh, have been endowed into European culture. Um, more examples here, and it says harness fittings from the Zempil burial site. Again, you've got the stirrups and all of this is absolutely beautifully worked. Here looks like buttons, but I'm sure they're not. I'm sure they're decorations that were studded onto clothing. And what's left of a sword? And again, this is also from the same burial site. And these uh, clothing ornaments such as uh, a bracelet or top that you can see at the top and various other bits which would be stitched into their clothing. I mean, this is really, really beautiful. I mean, it, the <laughs> words just fail me when you look at the exquisiteness of some of the craftsmanship and the detail and the attention that's been put into it. Let's see if I can get a... I'm not sure this will pick, be picked up by camera, but I hope it is. I know it's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, man. You think back how many years ago it was done with it? You say the craftsmanship with the equipment they had. Hammer and nail. You know, it's mental, mental. It's so beautiful. And grinders as well. These are costume accessories from a wealthy woman's grave. Look at this. This is absolutely beautiful. And more gold torques. And uh, charms and bracelets, rings. Again, this jewelry and toilet requisites from a rich woman's grave. As with this as well. Look at this, this is wonderful. And the 
the detail that's gone into this workmanship. I mean, it's the same all the way through, basically. It, this stuff is, was made to a very high standard. And to think it spent centuries in a grave, never to be appreciated. And this is all horse tack that we're looking at here. There's the, the bits there at the top. It's hard to imagine today the Mongols are a very peaceful but still horse riding group of people. They still retain all their costumes and habits and skills from the past which they like to present to people. But when you think they conquered most of Europe, yeah. it's just incredible. I think it's one And look at this. This huge, huge vase. And again, this comes from Bulgaria, and it's uh, obviously an amphorae. And this lovely bowl here, you just about see some detail on there, but it's not very clear. Coins, minted coins. Wow, it's a whole treasure chest here. And these were recovered, it doesn't actually say. Nura was the area, wherever that would be. And more gold coins here. Oh my god, yeah, that's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? It, it would have had um, like uh, diamonds or something or rubies that would have been fitted to the tops of these two boxes, but then they've been ripped out. God, they're gorgeous. Best class. Number two, no, there it is. Thank you. Breast class. It's belt fittings with a portrait of a Byzantine emperor. That's that one? Yep, yeah, that one. They're breast clasps. Them too. Yeah, they're beautiful. Gorgeous, isn't it? And look at that! Look at that jug! Isn't that amazing? All these things, all these things are oh, so beautiful. This is metal. I have a bit of a bone here, which obviously is part of the spinal column. Oh, it's a. A Hun arrowhead lodged in a vertebra. And if you look to the right of the vertebra, you can just see it sticking out like a spike. And whoever took that obviously died and in a great deal of pain, I, I would suspect. Now we're going through the ages. A steppe empire in Central Europe. The European steppe culture. And again, more more items that have been recovered as grave goods or from um, finds. It just says a horde of non ferrous metal objects. An exquisite chalice here. That is beautiful, isn't it?
Oh, we asked. Um, I'm a historian from England. Okay. And I did ask when I was downstairs because I'm also very aware of the sensitivity that people would have if you're filming things and or whether I'm planning to come back later to do burglary, I'm not. I'm just sharing this amongst my students. But, okay. but if but that's not a problem. For the people, no people. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not fil- old. I'm not filming people. I'm just looking at the objects and just glancing over each one. Okay. So I'm not studying it in depth so people can get the wrong ideas. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm very aware of the sensitivities okay, here. I'm just uh, telling you that you're not uh, all the people. No, I'm not filming people. No, no, no. no. Yeah. no. Okay. Just what the exhibition. Okay. I'm not interested in people. Just Look at it this way. People are boring. You can see them anywhere, can't you? But you can't see these everywhere. Okay, <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. And uh, certainly a, a collection here of uh, stirrups again and swords. The lady was concerned about my filming, but um, we did ask about filming and they didn't object to it. And now we're looking at early Christianity with some of the crucifixes. Oh my God, this is beautiful. I think this is King Stephen's crown. Wow, this is beautiful. This is a replica of the crown of Saint Stephen. And these are crucifixes and coins. Now all this dates to around the 10th for the 11th century. It's beautiful. Not a lot here really, it just, it just follows the story of the, the peoples of Europe as you can see them. The Huns, the Avars, the Bulgarians, and I didn't quite catch the last one. Each one of them has left their historic and genetic trait embodied within us all. I think we can go out this door over here. There's not much else is after this. It's, 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 I know it's beautiful, isn't it? This is the story of the, the, the nomads that came to Europe. It says here. Exit. In here it says bitter, please. I don't know why it says. I don't speak Austrian German. Well, anyway, that's the exhibition inside. We're going to have to go back through the main entrance. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this, and we're going to fire up the camera when we're into the courtyard again. We were t- we were challenged in there, weren't we? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it went well. We, it went well. We Tell me, brains. what do you think of the exhibition? Lovely. Absolutely it is, stunning. It is beautiful, stunning. isn't it? taking some of this mm. stuff in there. It, you look at what you've got nowadays to what you've got then days and what they had in tool wise 
and then made something that's beautiful what we can do with equipment. It's it's bre it was bre it, yeah it's breathtaking. I mean it was from the early nomads all the way through to the uh, the well to about tenth century yeah. with Christianity, obviously overcoming the pagan gods and their religions yeah. and beliefs. But the the most fascinating group is always the Mongols. They came so far to conquer Europe, and then because their leader had died, they all just returned home. Is that Genghis Khan? Genghis Khan. Yeah. 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 When he passed over. All of his army just returned. They never, do nothing. never came back. They just picked up their belongings and marched right. all the way back to Mongolia. And think we've, we've been driving for a couple of days, and that's hard going. I know. It? Yeah, I know. And they, these people home. travel thousands of miles. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much. No worries. Should we go?